Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Flagstaff. I am Reverend Penny Honey. It is always our joy and our honor to share this time with you. The weather won today, and we are encouraging people to stay home, stay warm, and stay safe. And who knows, you could always watch this message in your jammies and with a sandwich. So thank you again for being here on our YouTube channel at Unity of Flagstaff. I'd like to share a couple of announcements with you today. Um, we, we don't want you to miss a thing, even though we're not together this morning. On January 9th, 10.30 a.m. here at the center, Cynthia Hall will be presenting Healing Meditation and Visualization. We'll have a little sample of that later on in the service when Cynthia leads our meditation and visualization for today's time together. So thank you, Cynthia, for that. The donation suggestion is between $7 and $15 for this particular offering. And again, that is January 9th at 10.30 a.m. here at the center. I also want to bring your attention to the vision boarding class that is brought to us by the guru, vision board guru, Selena Shu, And that will be happening on Saturday, January 13th here at the center, 2.15 p.m. Set your intention for a joyful and fulfilling 2024. The materials will be provided. You can also bring any magazines or photos that you might want to include on your vision board. It is an opportunity to gather in community and just to exhale, refocus, and create a joyful vision for the new year. Won't you join us on Saturday, January 13th at 2.15 p.m. here at the Center at 1800 South Milton, Suite 103. We look forward to sharing that time with you. We have started our Soul Collage meeting, and there will be a makeup session for Session 1, because that seems to be the most important of all the sessions. Those sessions will continue on Saturdays at 2.15 here at the Center. February 3rd, 17th, and March 2nd are the next sessions. The makeup session will be on Tuesday, January 9th. You'll find more information about Soul Collage and that makeup session on our website, of course, at www.unityofflagstaff.org. But that makeup session will be happening at the conference room at 4th Street Professional Building, and of course it is facilitated by the Soul Collage facilitator, Carrie Hargraves. And we appreciate Carrie bringing that to our community. Again, check the website for the follow-up on that makeup session, and then be sure and join again the Soul Collage meeting at 2.15 on February 3rd, 17th, and March 2nd. Thank you again for being with us today, and now I would like to introduce to you Miss Trina Getz and Annie Stanford presenting the song, Expression. Enjoy. Good morning, Unity of Flagstaff. This is Expression by Devotion. I am, I am, an expression, an expression, of the Spirit, of the Spirit, of the Spirit, of the Spirit. I am, I am, an expression, an expression, of the Spirit, of the Spirit, of the Spirit, of the Spirit. A beautiful, a beautiful expression, expression of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit. Magnificent, magnificent expression, expression of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit. A unique, unrepeatable expression of God. 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 I am, I am, an expression, an expression of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit. I am, I am, an expression, an expression of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit, of the spirit. Right time, right time, right place, right place, an expression, an expression of the spirit, and spirit. I'm fabulous.
fabulous. I'm fabulous. I got it. I got it. An expression. An expression of the spirit. Of the spirit. A unique, unrepeatable expression of God. A unique, unrepeatable expression of God. A unique, unrepeatable expression of God. A unique unrepeatable expression of God I am I am an expression an expression of the spirit of the spirit of the spirit of the spirit I am I am an expression an expression of the spirit 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 So rest with me, won't you, for a moment. Deep breath in. As we remember all that we have to be grateful for, we bring into this space the Christ awareness, the knowing of our divinity and the oneness with all, the absolute, God. And we give great thanks for the opportunity to connect, to be together, and to enfold the entire planet in the love and the consciousness of good. For this we are grateful. And we say, and so it is. Good morning, I'm Trina Getz, and this is your inspirational moment. I found all of these online on a Louise Hay Affirmation website. I open my heart and sing the joys of love. I am patient, tolerant, and diplomatic. Every experience I have is perfect for my growth. My income is constantly increasing. All is well in my world. Every decision I make is the right one for me. As I forgive myself, it becomes easier to forgive others. I am a joyful breeze entering a room. My life is joyously balanced with work and play. I am beautiful and everybody loves me. And the last one, we are all family and the planet is our home. Blessings. And today we celebrate unity principle number three. Thoughts and words have creative power to determine events, and attract experiences. And the short version of that is this. If you think it and say it, your life will play it. Thank you for that. And now we will enjoy the music of India Ari. Meditation and visualization will follow with Cynthia Hall. This Tuesday, as I've mentioned before, January 9th, you can be with Cynthia as she teaches and shares different meditation and visualization practices to serve your healing at depth. Thank you, Cynthia, for being here today. We appreciate you. Cynthia Hall.
family did I am not the voices in my head I am not the pieces of the brokenness inside I am light
into your body, all the way up to the top of the head. Mingling with the light of the heavens. Now as you breathe, imagine a sun in the center of your chest, expanding out. This is a healing light, and as it spreads, this light is healing and aligning every cell in your body with divine perfection. You are energized. You are light. You are at peace with everything inside your body. Continue to breathe and allow the space of healing and divine perfection. Take a few breaths and come back into the room. Affirmations. I can see the eye rolling going on out there. I get it. Did you know that 60 to 70,000 is the number of thoughts that we have in a day? And did you know that 95% of those thoughts are repeats? And we're talking about from the time we start having thoughts. Repeat thoughts. By seven years old, 90% of our brain development has happened. And consider that 95% of that, those are repeat thoughts. Hmm, that's worth looking at, isn't it? So today we're talking about affirmations. And they're not just pretty words. We're going to talk about that. And as I said, I recognize the eye rolling. I get it. But let's dig a little deeper. Let's look not only at the feel-good part of affirmations, and of course, which is a staple in Unity and New Thought teachings are the affirmations, but the science of this. So affirmations have a pretty general definition. The first being that they can change my relationship to how I see myself and others. Affirmations, again, are not just pretty words. Affirmations from Truth Unity, we hear from Charles Fillmore that thoughts are things. That we employ the law of mind action, meaning that what we think is what we see and experience in our lives. And the formative power of thought. And all these observations that are true about thoughts, and they are things, they are also true about the thoughts that we hold, not just the ones we speak out, but those that we've carried with us, those repetitive thoughts. Charles Fillmore reminds us that if they're negative, they will do us harm. But we can let go of these and further harm will cease. And then we can attract new and better. Boy, that sounds like a great program, doesn't it? And best of all, we can begin in this process to do our own thinking. That could be very handy in today's world to do our own thinking, couldn't it? And it's much rarer than we realize. When we're doing our own thinking, we have new inspiration and guidance. And affirmations are one of the tools that help us optimize that. It is just as necessary that we let go of old thoughts and conditions, Charles Fillmore reminds us in his book, Prosperity. After they've served their purpose, 
we just lay them down, as we talked about, in the white stone and burning bowl service. In fact, it's difficult and proven almost impossible to lay hold of new ideas and new conditions until we've made room for them. Now, the thing that people struggle with, I believe most, about affirmations is that we think, I can't say that. That just ain't true. Affirmations don't make the condition true. Saying them doesn't make something you don't believe true for you. The affirmation is the ability to accept the newer, the higher thought, the more true thought, the more correct attitude and belief. And this goes back to, of course, our understanding that we are divine beings, that we are one with the absolute and with the all. And therefore, these affirmations take us back to that higher consciousness. It's pretty handy when things are pretty dark. It's just pretty handy even when they're not dark. Louise Hay, of course, the queen of affirmations. If you don't know her, look her up. Louise Hay, H-A-Y-E. Affirmations, she says, are any statement that we make, either positive or negative, carries power. And we can only create from that consciousness and that place of power good reminder that affirmations aren't always positive. All those thoughts that we've been rerunning, sometimes they're negative, aren't they? And we'll talk more about that. Affirmations challenge those negative thoughts, those unhelpful, those unproductive, those thoughts that hold us back. And this isn't just woo-woo. Science has become very interested in the power of positive affirmations. The brain's response to positive thinking. Now, many people I know consider affirmations or positive affirmations pseudoscience, but the research is ongoing. As more studies are needed to fully confirm the benefits of positive thinking, more and more studies continue to happen. Disciplines such as neuroscience have really dug into this. It investigates how the brain processes emotions and contributes to the current knowledge of our role and who we see ourselves as in the world. Recent studies have linked affirmations to concrete physical and mental gains in areas such as health and learning and sports and interpersonal relationships. There was a self-affirmation theory that developed in 1988 by a, a gentleman of the last name Steele. So yes, there are empirical studies based on the idea that we can maintain a higher sense of self-integrity and of identity in a healthier way and see the world by telling ourselves these affirmations. What we believe in positive ways, repeating to ourselves. Now, the science behind this is neuroplasticity, and I promise not to take you on a Science Friday adventure. But neuroplasticity is your brain's ability to change and adapt to different circumstances throughout your life. Now, remember, we're talking about affirmations as one of the ABCs to your spiritual life. But it sounds to me like affirmations apply across the board. Our professional lives, our personal lives, our spiritual lives. And the cool thing about these affirmations is what makes them so effective and makes them work is that the brain actually gets a little confused sometimes. And it can't distinguish the difference between reality and imagination. Now, I think there's a lot going on in the world right now that can attest to that fact. The brain does not determine or distinguish if I'm just thinking it or if I'm doing it. Between what it's being told and what it's experiencing, it doesn't see a difference. Isn't that fascinating? It doesn't really know if it's physically happening or not. It just doesn't have that capacity to decipher. So when we create a mental image of ourselves doing something, there was an experiment done with basketballs. 
took three different groups. One group sat in a room and studied about how to do a free throw and watched videos. One group actually was out on the court. And one group sat and affirmed that they were good free throwers. And when they put the three groups together, they all had about the same quality of experience and quality of, of success. Wow. They say it can work at the gym, too. I'm still working on that one. But the brain doesn't distinguish. Many of the same brain areas that actually experience situations in the world are the same ones that light up in these MRIs when we just affirm that we are doing this. So let's think about that for a minute. Go ahead. Keep telling yourself that whatever negative thought it is that you're carrying around with you, go ahead. Keep doing that. Possibly the same negative thought that you've been carrying since 10 or 12 years old. And Henry Ford reminds us that whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So if the neuroplasticity of the brain is the center of where this activity is happening, and we know that the brain doesn't distinguish between the physical and what we are thinking and what we are seeing in our minds, well, you do the math. The MRI evidence shows and suggests that neural pathways are increased when people practice self-affirmations. If you want to get really, really scientific, it's all about the vendromedical prefrontal cortex. Basically, what it means is, is that we take in these affirmations and it has a positive impact on the areas of the brain that we're working in. 33% of all medical healings, it is, it is tracked, come from believing that they can be healed. A study by a scientist by the name of Falk and his colleagues suggests that when we choose to practice positive affirmations, we're better able to view what might otherwise be seen as a threatening condition. So affirmations, in other words, when we're practicing positive affirmations, we have better judgment as to what is a threat to us, to our integrity, to our beliefs. It impacts how we see the stuff that the world is throwing at us. You think that might be useful? I'm thinking affirmations, a tool for your spiritual life. They're not just pretty words. And there's a difference between positive thoughts and affirmations. Positive affirmations are focused on specific issues or goals or concerns or hopes or dreams or desires. Positive thinking is more generalized. Affirmations may be used as a tool to create a mindset that's conducive to positive thought patterns. It's not just about repeating words. It's about shifting your mindset. When's the best time to do that? When your mind is receptive. How does your mind become receptive? Well, here at Unity, what we teach is prayer and meditation. There's so many benefits to affirmations. I mean, physically tracked, science shows us there's a decrease in health deteriorating stress. Self-affirmations have been used effectively on interventions and addictions. They can make us less likely to dismiss harmful health messages. They can help us to link, and it's been linked, to positive academic achievement, physical fitness. It's been demonstrated to lower stress and rumination. <laughs> Any of us could use that, huh? Affirmations send healthy messages to your body and it reduces our experience of physical pain. Now, I'm not saying that the affirmations change or take away the pain completely. But what I am saying is, it changes the way the brain perceives the pain. And it can make it more manageable, proven by science. It changes our negative thinking patterns how about some catastrophizing? 
How about some overgeneralizing? How about jumping to conclusions? How about all or nothing categorizing? Yes, affirmations have a positive impact on these things. I can see that in the world, can't you? These thought patterns can negatively impact almost every part of your life. And remember, all this science also works, as I was saying before, on the negative that we affirm within us. The negative that fills our brains, our minds, our thoughts, our bodies. It too has the same potential and power. Let's think about that. You know, we have lots of great negative affirmations, don't we? I can name a few. And when I hear myself do that, which sometimes I catch myself, I realize how I'm giving away my power, the power of my thoughts. Now, what makes for a good affirmation? The first thing that I saw repeated over and over and over was, Affirmations must have our personal value in it. We say it not because we want, to, we want it to happen. We say it because we see that potential within ourselves. And when we are affirming someone else, quietly or aloud, we are also affirming what we see, the potential within them, which again goes back to that Christ expression that divine nature that we are. So really, you can't get an affirmation wrong if you're following that lead. The affirmation must be relative to you, not something that someone's told you to say. It doesn't mean that a suggestion isn't a great suggestion and that it doesn't resonate with you. Go for it. But it must belong to you personally. And rule number two, as we look to create positive affirmations, we just can't believe in anything that is too far from the truth for us. I'll give you an example. I could affirm all day long that this 63-year-old, 5'2", white, about 15 pounds overweight female is going to be a professional NBA star. Now, I don't believe that. I have no personal attachment to that or belief in that. And I can affirm that all day long, and so can you. You can even affirm it with me if you want to. But at the core of who I am and at the core of who you are, that just isn't something that we can stretch into believing. I believe that it is the core of who you are. When we allow that to drive the content of our affirmations, those are the successful ones. Besides, that's too much sweating and running up and down the court. Who'd want to do that? It has to be something that we can align with, something that we can believe. And affirmations need to be concise and solution-focused. They are not about where we don't want to go. <laughs> affirmations are about what we see as the potential it disrupts the negative thought that we have about that particular situation. So for instance, I could say, I am not insecure. Hmm, and yet I still feel a little insecure. But what's more palatable to me and feels more personal and something that I can get my head and my heart wrapped around is, I express confidence in all my affairs. I am solution-focused. I can get my head wrapped around that because at least I'm moving toward it. At least I understand the potential is there. But I don't shut it down by trying to affirm something that isn't concise and clear and consistent. Science says repetition is what makes it work. Messages should be repeated multiple times each day. The consistent practice, the consistent practice of affirmation, of affirmations steadies the mind, says Charles Fillmore, so that the power of God can move through us to heal 
even deep-rooted mental and physical ailments. The consistent practice steadies the mind so the power of the divine can move through us with recognition that we realize it, that we know it, that we affirm it. It's important to keep in mind the healing, and not just physical healing, but healing must begin with our attitudes and our feelings and our beliefs. And if there's anything we feel or believe that keeps the life of God from expressing to its fullest, is what Elizabeth Sam Turner tells us, then it must be released and replaced with a full consciousness of the life of God. Affirmations not just pretty words. And affirmations to be effective should be grounded in the present as if it's already happening. Because at a soul level, at a divine nature level, it is. And the affirmation should inspire the user to take steps towards manifesting that in the physical world. I am statements like, I am healthy. I make choices to support that. Affirmations also need to be attached to an existing habit. Science has shown that when affirmations are attached to a, a habit like brushing your teeth, walking the dog, petting the cat, sending text messages, it solidifies the affirmation. It's like this. And so, even though it might be hard to hear when I'm brushing my teeth, I am a divine being. I am light. I make clear and easy choices. Brush, 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 brush. All this, while it's attached to an existing habit, then it becomes a habit to be affirming ourselves. It couldn't be a bad habit. Morning, noon, night, all through the day, everyone can use them. They are powerful tools that reshape our minds. The thing about affirmations is this. Affirmations will keep the negative at bay. It'll keep the diminishing thoughts about ourselves at bay, but we have to do the inner work. And I suggest seeing Unity of Flagstaff on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. if you want to get that work started. We have to do the internal work to recognize where our words are not supporting our higher expression. And we have to leave, we have to look at our belief structures. And that's what we're going to do next week. A, B, C's of your spiritual journey. B being belief. And always test your affirmations. Feel what the affirmation feels like in your body. And if you can't get it and it doesn't stick with you, it's probably not a fit. Adapt the affirmation to feel what is truer for you than what you may be experiencing in a given moment. If you can't feel confident in saying, I am confident, recognize that, test that, and know what it feels like to be confident. And so, Affirm, I know what it feels like to be confident, and I am moving toward that. I choose to be happy doesn't always feel possible. But I can see the good in this experience. That's a positive affirmation. Not just pretty words. We have the opportunity, the power of our own thoughts, we have the opportunity to create a better day, a better life, a better world. As we move through this three-week series, I encourage you, look at your affirmations. Test them. Be concise. Know that they are there to support you. Make them believable so that you can use them in your daily life. Know that they work and that the brain is working with you. Send the message that you're blessed. Send the message that
that you're strong. Send a message that you are a divine child and you are the expression of the absolute all. Thank you, my friends. We'll see you next week. Namaste. Join me in affirming our prayer for protection, won't you? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us wherever we are. God is and all is well. Thank you again for being with us. We hope that you've enjoyed the first of this three-part series on the ABCs of your spiritual life. Today being A, affirmations. Remember, there are more than pretty words. Next week, we'll be talking about beliefs. Oh yeah, those that support and maybe even those that don't support what we're affirming in our lives. Won't you join us at 1030 a.m. here at 1800 South Milton, Suite 103. Weather, of course, allowing. If not, 
always know that you can join us here on live stream at youtube.unityofflagstaff.org. Be sure and share that link. We appreciate you and we look forward to sharing your spiritual journey. And it is our intention that unity be about tools, not rules. We are affirming with you in this week. Everything is working to my advantage. Namaste. Be blessed.